Hey everybody, Chris Gallagher. Thank you for attending our Preacher's Pen Bible class. We are in Colossians chapter 3. If you want to follow along today, you can do that. If you're just going to sit back and listen, I would still encourage you to open up the Bible let the Bible speak for itself. You know, one of the things that we do in this Bible class is we try to take a chapter of the week. And the reason is, is because we're hoping and encouraging you to go and to read that entire book. Now, some are going to be a little bit longer than others. Like when we went through Luke 15, you can read the whole Gospel of Luke. It's not going to take you that long necessarily, but it seems a lot to read. But when we talk about Paul's letters, especially Ephesians and Colossians and Philippians, Galatians, these won't take that long to read. And these will allow you to grab the the full context of everything that's being talked about. So as we dive into Colossians chapter 3, I would encourage you to go back and read through the book of Colossians. Remind yourself of chapter 3 and find out what's there. But as always, you can find more information at thepreacherspen.org. But let's get into our Bible class today. Now we left off in Colossians chapter 3 about verse 8. And we've been talking about the new life versus the old life or the new self versus the old self. And remember, one of the things that we mentioned is that when you become a Christian, your life is different. You're cleansed from your sins because you've gained some knowledge, and that knowledge has caused you to take actions. And your actions are extremely important because what goes into our mind comes out in our actions. Sometimes what we have to do is we have to change the input to change the output. So in this letter, Paul is encouraging the church at Colossae. He's saying you've got to continue... But at the same time, you've got to pull some things out of your life. Now, he's already told them in verse 5 to put to death. That means to get out and stop doing these things. Sexual morality, impurity, passion, evil desire, covetousness, uh, covetousness, which is idolatry. And he says they once walked in those things, but they're different now. This is a really good companion chapter to Ephesians chapter 2, where Paul tells them they were dead in their trespasses and sins, but they have been made alive together with God. So when you put these things together, you start to see that the Christian life is a different life. In fact, look at verse 8, or just listen along if you're listening. It says, But now you must put put them all away, which is anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. He says, put those things away. Because when you put those away, once again, we're changing the input. The obscene talk comes from our thoughts that we have in our mouth. He says, you need to put those away. He, but he extends this further, not just for your benefit, but for the benefit of others. Verse 9, do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self. Don't tell lies. That's what he's saying. Don't do this. If you have a new life, then your life should be changing. We don't say we have a new life and still practice the old things. Instead, we live for the new things. I believe there's a difference. When you are dead in your trespasses and sins before Christ. You do whatever you want to do. But now your standard has been raised. Your standard of morality has been raised. Your standard of life has been raised. So he's telling them this, and he says, put away these things. Don't lie to one another. And here's what he says, middle of verse 9. Seeing that you have put off the old self with his practices, and you've put on your new self. He tells them they're different. You see, as Christians, when we obey the gospel, we're different. We may look physically, and we will probably look physically the exact same. We may smile a little bit more, have a little bit more of a a positive attitude, a positive nature, but spiritually we're cleansed. Spiritually we are absolutely different. We have been reconciled to God. We've been brought back into this powerful relationship with Him. And this is what he goes on to say. Having put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its Creator. He says, your image of the Creator is different. But he continues, here there is not Greek nor Jew, uncircumcised or circumcised, barbarian, Scythian or slave or free, but Christ is all in all. He says, while we look different on the outside, Christ sees us for who we are on the inside. And he sees us absolutely differently. So therefore, since you're getting rid of some of these things, I want you to notice what he says. This goes back to what we mentioned on Monday, what we mentioned on Tuesday, and what we're going to continually mention. And that is this, verse 12. Put on then. Remember how we talked about if you have something that you take out of your life, you need to fill that space up? So if they're getting rid of sexual immorality and passions and evil desires and lying and anger and malice and wrath, what are they going to put in? What are they going to have? 
So this is what he tells them in verse 12. Put on then as God's chosen one. See your value? That's why you're different. You're God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. Okay, that describes God's chosen ones. So put on these things. Ready? Compassionate hearts. Goes against the wrath and anger and malice. Kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bearing with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgiving one another. Now here's a standard. Ready? As the Lord has forgiven you, so you must forgive. He says, here's where your life's different. Instead of getting mad about a situation, instead of practicing that anger, take a look and say, hey, how can I forgive? We need to look, and forgiveness is a big one. That's why I centered in on that one. We need to look for the avenue to forgive instead of the avenue to be angry. Let me say that again. We need to look for the avenue to forgive instead of the avenue to be angry. When he says previously, do not lie to one another, I think getting here, he says, bearing one another. Don't just tell somebody something. But instead, bear one another. Understand one another. Build this relationship together. You do this out of kindness and compassionate hearts. Because now their life is different, and guess what? Your life is different too. So as Paul is talking about their change of life, he, he shares this in verse 14, which is powerful. He says, And above all these put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Above everything else that you're changing your life, remember to put on love. Because love is going to bind everything, he says, together in harmony. You want to have a compassionate heart? Learn to love. You want to be able to forgive one another? You have to learn to love. Remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 where Paul, in describing love, says if he had everything the world offers him but he did not have love, then he wasn't anything? That's what Paul is reminding them. In a different way here in Colossians to, or the letter to the Colossian, uh, the letter to the Colossians, excuse me. He's talking about this love binds them together in perfect harmony, but he continues once again a little bit more. Verse 15, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which you were called in the one body. He says before it was just about you, your passions, your desires, uh, your immorality, your anger, your wrath. He says now it's about others. Go back and read this passage and and, and look at those things individually. And you'll see our passions are what we want, what we're going to do. Here's how we think about things. You hurt me, so I'm going to lie to you. I'm not going to forgive you. I'm not going to do these. And now he shares with them, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which you were called in one body. So now you're called into this body, this very unique body that Ephesians chapter 1 tells us is the church. The church is the body of Christ, and he is the head of the body. But once again, Paul continues. The next verse, or the next part of the verse, in verse 15, it says, And be thankful. Be thankful that you have the peace of God. Be thankful that you are part of this one body. Be thankful that the Lord has forgiven you so that you can forgive others. You've got to be thankful. And this this thankfulness is different than the way the world sees thankfulness. That's why he can say this verse. We're very familiar with verse 16. Verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing hymns and psalms and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your heart to God. He says this is going to be part of, and I believe part of the overflow as to where this continues to be. Part of the overflow as a changed life is joy. The Bible says in the book of James, Is any among you happy? Let him sing psalms. Let him sing. We sing when we're happy because it's an overflow of our joy. But this singing has to do with teaching and it has to do with admonishing one another. So we see this relationship that continues, this very, very powerful relationship, all because of a change. So I would ask you today, how have you changed? Have you changed in your life as as you look forward in various things? Have you changed? Has your life been greater because you've known Jesus? I hope that it has. Stick with us. Come back tomorrow, which will be Thursday, as we're going to dig into this just a little bit more. Then on Friday, we're going to sum up a lot of the things that we've been talking about. But hope that you have a great day. Check us out at PreachersPen.org. Follow us on Twitter. Just look for the Preacher's Pen on Facebook, Instagram, all those fun places. Easiest place to do that is simply go to the PreachersPen.org. You'll see our social media links there. Hope you have a great day. Look forward to talking to you soon.